Hey ladies and gents, this is Paul Acevedo of Windows Central here with a video review of three exciting products from Brook Design, a Taiwanese gaming accessory manufacturer. All three of these products are Brook Super Converters. And what these do is allow you to use the controllers from one console with a different console that they were not intended to be used for. Here we have a converter to use PlayStation 3 and 4 controllers with the Xbox One. And here is one of those converters so you can see it. You have to plug into the USB port here. None of these accessories allow for wireless play. They all require you to plug the controller into the super converter, which is not a big deal. This one lets you use Xbox 360 or Xbox One controllers with the PlayStation 4. It looks just like the red one, really, just a different label and different color. And this one lets you use PlayStation 2 controllers with the Xbox One, which is something I never thought I'd be doing because PlayStation 2 controllers are not USB but they have designed an adapter that can accommodate that. Here's the PlayStation 2 to Xbox One adapter up close. It's got a switch here to switch between gamepad and steering wheel, so you should be able to use some PlayStation steering wheels with the Xbox One. That's wild. And this button here functions as the Xbox Home or Guide button, because PlayStation 2 controllers did not have a home button. All right, now the first converter we're going to test is PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4. Here I've got a PlayStation 3 DualShock 3 controller. And I have a mini USB cable, which is what DualShock 3 is used. Plug it into the converter here. And plug it into one of the Xbox One's three USB ports. As soon as it's plugged in, the light comes on green. That's how you know it is working. And at this point, the controller comes on. I can now navigate menus and do other things with it. Hit the guide button, takes me up to the top, double tap it, boom. All these buttons map naturally to the equivalent Xbox One buttons. Now let's switch it to a PlayStation 4 controller. Alright, I've got a PlayStation 4 controller connected to a micro USB cable and the Brook Super Converter. Plug it in, light comes on, there it is. And now the controller lights up. I think we'll want to see what it's like to play a game with it, so let's go find Halo 5. All right, now I'm in a Halo 5 level, playing it with a PlayStation 4 controller. Let's see what all the buttons do. L1 acts as left bumper. L2, left trigger. R1, melee, right bumper. R2, fires. X is the A button to jump. You got your dash with the B button, circle. Then X reloads and activates, that's square button. And you switch weapons with Y, the triangle button. Feels great. Then if I need to view the guide menu, double tap the PlayStation button, just like the Xbox Home or Guide button. This would be back menu and this pauses the game, the Options button. Currently, the Touchpad button, a unique button to the PlayStation 4 controller, does not do anything, although I believe that Brook plans to eventually make it a customizable button. One of the cool features of the Super Converter is that you can add Turbo to any button. Let's try that. You press and hold, share, and then this. That makes the light down here start blinking. Then you press and hold this and whichever button you want to be turbo, so I'm going to make it jump. And then I push options to finish it, and home. All right, if that worked, then I should have jump on turbo. And it works, I'm holding turbo and jumping repeatedly. Pretty cool. Like if you ever play a game where you have to rapidly hit attack or fire or something, you could just program that button to be turbo on the fly like that. Then if you want to cancel turbo, you start it the same way, press and hold these two buttons. Then you press these two buttons together, share and options. And then you press the home button. Light stops blinking. No longer on turbo. Relatively painless. The super converter also lets you reprogram buttons to be different buttons. So let's see whether or not we can handle that. Press these two buttons at the same time starts blinking. Now what I'm going to try to do is make 
L2 perform the same function as R2. So I press the destination button. So then I press share and the old button. Then I push start and options to complete and home. All right, let's see if this worked. L2, look at that, it's firing. R2 is still performing the old function. So it didn't deactivate that button. Then the question becomes, well, how do I get L2 to go back to performing left trigger? Do that. Press and hold these two. Press both of these at once. And then press this. All done. Now L2 aims once again. Pretty sweet. All right, now we're going to try out a PlayStation 2 controller with the Xbox One. I don't have a regular DualShock 2 handy, but I do have this really cool PlayStation 2 Saturn pad from Sega. So it's just like the Sega Saturn controller, but with an extra button. And it works with PlayStation 2. First, I plug it in. Unlike the other super converters, this particular one is not firmware updatable. So if Xbox One ever completely broke the old controller firmware, that would be a problem. But so far, that hasn't happened. All right, it's on. Even though this has an LED, it doesn't actually light up as far as I can tell. Double tap to bring up the guide menu. There it is, it's working fine. What better game to test out my fighting controller than Killer Instinct, the popular fighting game from Microsoft and Iron Galaxy. So here I am in Killer Instinct. Top three rows of buttons set up to be punches. Bottom three rows set up to be kicks. Very natural button layout here. Isn't it a shame that Street Fighter V is not planned for Xbox One? I sure think it is. Then I've got L2 set to be all three punches at once, and R2 set to be all three kicks at once. I can pull off special moves very naturally. The center pad was a great fighting controller. That's what I really love about it. It's so good for rolling motions. And a big part of the audience for these converters is fighting game fans, because a lot of them have expensive arcade sticks. And a lot of arcade sticks are compatible with the Brook Super Converters, not every single one. But you can find kind of a makeshift compatibility list in the forums at shoryukin.com, SRK, popular fighting game and arcade stick website. I personally am not going to go through a lag test, but these Super Converters have been lag tested. They introduce a few tiny frames of lag, but it's extremely hard to notice. For any normal user, it'll feel exactly like you were just using the default controller for the system. And you, when you consider that the Super Converters range in price from $25 to $45, that's a whole lot less money than buying a whole brand new arcade stick for your Xbox One or PlayStation 4. Okay, now we're looking at the Xbox 360 and Xbox One to PlayStation 4 Super Converter. I've already got an Xbox 360 wired controller plugged in. The light on the sides is blue instead of green on this particular one. Controlling the PlayStation 4 system menus works exactly the same as if I was using a DualShock 4 controller. Up. Pressing the guide button acts like the home button. It takes me back to the front of the list. Back button here acts as the share button. There we go. It takes me to the share menu. Let's push B to go back. Now let's unplug the 360 controller and switch over to an Xbox One controller. Here I have the Xbox One Elite controller, one of my very favorite controllers. Got it connected with the micro USB cable. You can use a regular Xbox One controller as well. Vibrates and it's ready to go. It's important to note that before you can use any of the super converters that connect to the PlayStation 4, you will need to update the super converters firmware. That's because every time Sony updates the console firmware, it breaks the super converter compatibility, so then Brooke has to update it, which they do very quickly. The actual firmware updating process is a little bit confusing. When you go to Brooke's website, it can be difficult to find out just which files you should download or install. Sometimes there's two different files, like for this one, there's an A file and a B file. And you can install both of those files. They're like two halves of the same firmware. But there's not a good explanation for why I would install only one instead of installing them both. Hopefully Brooke will improve the documentation on the firmware updates. To test this super converter, we are going to play Earth Defense Force 4.1, my very favorite PlayStation 4 game so far. 
I have my buttons mapped a little unconventionally in this particular game. By default, the trigger would fire, but I've got it on R1. R1 is right bumper, L1 left bumper, left trigger, right trigger. All very natural. Your four face buttons here. Analog sticks in a different place, in a better place, in my opinion. But this is still the left analog stick for looking around, etc. And you've got your D-pad for D-pad related things. It should be noted that although the Xbox One controller has a headset jack, you cannot plug a headset into this and use it with the PlayStation 4. As far as I know, none of the Brooks Super Converters support headsets in any fashion. Which is a shame, but not a huge deal. Likewise, of course, you cannot use the DualShock's tilt function with an Xbox controller, and nobody should expect that. That would be impossible. The DualShock 4 has a touchpad on it and a touchpad button. You can click in the touchpad button. Some PlayStation 4 games require the use of the touchpad or the touchpad button. Of course, you cannot perform touchpad functions with an Xbox One controller. It doesn't have a touchpad. But at least Brooke does let you perform the touchpad button function. If you play a game that needs the touchpad button, such as Tokiden Kiwami makes you press it to start, you can perform that function by clicking in both the left and right analog sticks. So I'm really glad they've allowed that. So the Brooke Super Converters are really great accessories. For anywhere from $25 to $45, this particular one is $45, I believe, you basically have another controller you can use. Like, I don't need a PlayStation controller to use this, although I think you do need a PlayStation controller to do the firmware updates. But one big advantage of this over the Titan 1 is that you don't have to, like, start up the unit with a PlayStation controller and then switch to an Xbox controller like you have to do with the Titan 1 and the Cronus Max. With this one, it's just like I have another PlayStation controller. So if I only had one PlayStation controller and I get a Brook Super Converter and use an Xbox controller, now I've got access to two controllers. Really convenient. And a lot of us just have our preferences about which controllers we like best, etc. The Elite controller is easily my favorite controller, so I really love being able to use it on the PlayStation 4. And if you had an expensive arcade stick, then of course it's fantastic to be able to use that with the platform of your choice as well. Just make sure you check compatibility if you're hoping to use a third-party controller or arcade stick with the Super Converters, because not every single third-party controller works. For instance, the Power A Mini Series Xbox One controller does work with the Super Converter. However, the Razer Wildcat controller, unfortunately, does not. However, Brook can improve compatibility with firmware updates, and they've already told me that they're looking into getting the Wildcat to become compatible, which is really cool. So if you own both an Xbox and a PlayStation system, or one of the other systems with a controller that you want to use on your PS4 or your Xbox One, then the Brook Super Converter is an accessory that I highly recommend. It works flawlessly, it does everything you could reasonably expect it to do, and the price is right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to go to our website, windowscentral.com, for our detailed written review. Follow me on Twitter, at Paul R. Acevedo. And follow us on Twitch, at Windows Central. Leave us a comment to let us know you liked the review. And whatever you do, don't hate. Appreciate.